just want today to be a little different. Praise God. I always want every day to be a little different. Yeah. Amen. Because change is good for me. Now, I don't want God to be different. No. I want Him to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the consistency that I want in my life. Is I want Jesus, Jesus, Jesus every day. Amen. But we need change in our lives. Yes, Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' precious name, Lord, I plead your blood over this place today, right now, Father God. I believe you're going to do a special work in here today, Amen. Lord. And I just, I want to go with the shift today, Lord Jesus. I want to be obedient to this message, to what it's doing in my life, Lord God. And it's my prayer that as you're doing this in my life, that it will filter down from the pulpit, Lord, out into the people, into the congregation. Father, that they'll get this thing, that we've all learned something today. But take the call. Cleanse my lips today, Father God. Instead of watching a guard over my mouth today, Lord, that I bring forth your word with clarity, with power, that people get eyes to see it, ears to hear it, to break up the foul ground of your heart, to receive it today. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I wanted to talk to you today about the land of Egypt, amen, and the children of Israel and how they were brought into bondage, amen, for 400 years. And uh, I think if I had to title my message today, I, I would call it, uh, Turn Aside Your Burning Bush Moment, amen. So let me get right into the scripture here. Going back to Exodus, we're going to talk about Moses a little bit today, amen? And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, amen? And he spied an Egyptian, smiting in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way, and he looked that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Thank you, Jesus, for your word today, Lord God. As I said earlier, John was ministering this morning. Jesus said, he said, they that worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So it has to go through Jesus. And Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. Yeah. Amen. So this word of God will change you. Amen. Even if I didn't testify or did anything, all I would have to do is just sit here and read scripture after scripture, and it will do something inside of your life. Amen. Amen. But of course, we like to throw a little something on top of that, praise God, uh, to bring it out, to make it personal. Amen. But I want you to understand, Moses knew he was not an Egyptian. Amen. He named a different name. He named the name of the Most High God, praise God. And he looked upon their burdens. Moses had compassion. He knew that he was different, that he was set apart. And he saw his people enslaved. He knew there was a problem there. And he was going to fix it in his own way. He had a calling on his life. Amen. Just like you have a calling on your life. Amen. Amen. And like I have a calling on my life. But most of us, unfortunately, today... And this is the condition of the body of Christ today, and I truly believe it is. The body of Christ is enslaved in Egypt today, and it doesn't even know it. Amen. Amen. We have slowly had our freedom taken away by pastors who preach popular sermons and tell you how to get rich quick rather than tell you how to be crucified with Christ and how to endure to the end to be saved, not say a, a little prayer and walk away and they slap you on the forehead, put their notch in their belt and say you're good to go for eternity. That's a lot. Amen. And here's what I want to explain is when Moses was in Egypt, he knew he was different, but he was still in Egypt. Here's why Moses killed that man, because he did it the way of the Egyptian way. Moses didn't know God's way. And I'm going to say this. Most of the church today does not know God's way. Amen. You've lived in Egypt for so long. You've had Egyptian preachers preaching to you that they're of the land of Egypt. They're involved in the things of Egypt, okay? And you've got this message over these last many decades here that have taken away your spiritual spine, that have made you so soft that the minute the devil 
jumps up and you got to deal with somebody's situation, you'll cut and run. If we can't just cast a demon out of them and get it done in two seconds and you find out that you got to walk with somebody through a journey to get them out of where they're at to where they need to be, Amen. things start to change at that point. It's not so fantastic anymore. Amen. Suddenly there's going to be some hurt involved. There's going to be some pain involved because I'm going to have to invest in some people that are just as broken as me, more broken than I am or maybe even ever was. Praise God. And i got to get them somewhere where God wants me to get them to, just like Moses. Amen. I, I, I hope this makes sense today. Amen. Amen. Because here was the problem with Moses. Amen. Moses had this idea of God. He knew that he was different. Amen. That, that, that he had been set apart. But Moses was still in Egypt. Moses still ate the foods of Egypt. Amen. Moses got the education of Egypt. Amen. He hung out. He listened to the music of Egypt. He watched the entertainment of Egypt. They had shows and all that kind of stuff back then, and live theater and all that stuff. It was all Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. And that is the church today. The church has become Egypt. They don't even know it. The church has brought in the gods of Egypt and the gods of Babylon. Amen. We have integrated Babylon into our holy days in the church, celebrating uh, Catholic holy days. We're not a part of that. We're not a part of Babylon. We don't worship idols and things like that. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not part of Egypt. We're not part of those old religious systems. Amen? But yet, I look at all these churches, and they're all in bondage. They've got Egyptian symbols in their churches. They, 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 they've got all this stuff in this thing, and they don't even realize it. My wife and I, just to prove this, we went down to uh, Gatlinburg, and we went uh, to hear this little sales seminar. This lady was telling me about their church called Pathways. And yes, I'm naming names and churches. People can talk about our church if they want to. But Pathways was this big church, and I guess it's like the crossroads of, of, of Gatlinburg. And she was telling me that uh, how they do service and how they used the music of Egypt in their service. Now, she didn't say the music of Egypt. She said, well, we use that uh, Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Oh, wow. Don't stop believing. Oh, it's so inspiring. It's so encouraging. I don't need any encouragement from the world. I don't want the encouragement from Egypt. Amen. I don't drink of the cup of devils and then drink of the cup of the Lord. And because a pastor got up there and let it happen and said it's okay, the church embraces it. Now we've got secular music in the in the church, and the church is in a church. It's a nightclub. I look, and even I know good men and women of God that I know that are preachers, and I see them preaching at these places, and I want to comment. Could you please turn the lights up in the room? I can't see the people. Are you preaching in darkness? Are you preaching darkness? Amen. Man, I want all the lights in here as long as I can see what's on the. Thing. And if we got to buy televisions to put up there so you can see it and it's not washed out, that's what we'll do. Amen. We don't worship in the dark. I don't want to worship with the things of Egypt, the instruments of Egypt, the sounds of Egypt, the music of Egypt, the music of Pharaoh and those people. Okay, so you understand, Moses is still in Egypt. Now, and when he went out the second day, Moses went back out again. Behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. So he sees two of his brethren fighting with each other, and he said to him that did the wrong, the guy that was causing the problem, Wherefore smitest thou, my fellow? Why are you doing this? Why are you beating up your brother, man? And he said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? And, and Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is now. Now let me back up. Wow. And Moses, and, and Moses said, Moses wanted to get involved. Man, why are you hurt your brother? Why are you doing this to your fellow Christian? And what was the immediate response of the church? Take the beam out of your own eye, Moses, before you tell me about the beam in mine. This man, Moses, was trying to help these two men. They didn't care. They didn't care that they were enslaved in Egypt or none of that. They only cared about themselves in the fight and whatever deal this guy had going on with that guy. He didn't love his neighbor as himself. He, that guy could care less. And they did not have the same God as the Egyptians. 
These are supposed to be Christians. I can read in that one, in, in verse 14 right there and see the church today. When I come up and I tell somebody in this church, hey, you got to leave that thing alone. That will send you to hell. Who are you to tell me? Who are you to? You're just a pastor. I have to submit to God, not any man. Hello. Yeah. Th those are the text messages that I receive from a man in this church, and that's why he's no longer here. Because he only has to submit to God, not, not to the pastorship or anything else. But that, that don't fly. Okay? If you don't want to be in submission to the pastorship, if you don't view me as the pastor of the church, you, you're going to go find someplace else because I'm not going to have rebellion and witchcraft going on in my church. Amen. Okay? Amen. I have a nice smile. I might look soft up here. But I'm telling you, just like in the penitentiary, don't, don't take that, that softness as that I'm okay with your sin. Amen? Amen? I'm not okay with it. God's not okay with it today. But here's what I want to say. The church is saying, who made you a prince and a judge over us? The church cannot receive correction today. The church don't want pastors in the pulpit that say, that's wrong. Hey, y'all need to stop dating and get married. Make this thing official or start sitting on other sides of the room. But you can't say that in the church today. But who's that pastor to say that to me? Amen? Amen. So you kind of get the idea, the state of the, of the world, the church. You can't tell me nothing. John, isn't that you? You're that guy. I'll ask Patricia. Patricia, is that your brother? Is he the kind of, you just can't tell him nothing, right? He looks stubborn. Praise God. Amen. That's a good thing. He said no. Amen. But that's the church today. Who is that pastor to tell me how to live my life? Who is that person to come along and give me correction? That's right. Amen. Listen. So Pharaoh heard this thing and he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and he sat down by the well. God allowed this to happen because some, the same thing that happened to Moses is the same thing that has to happen to us, Brother Ed. Right now, we've all got an idea of who we think Jesus is. Okay? I don't know how many of you Really read and study to show yourself approved, okay? But you might think you know the Word of God, which we're still trying to practice it in the land of Egypt as an Egyptian. God had to get Moses out of Egypt for 40 years because he had to get Egypt out of Moses. Amen? God has got to get you out of Egypt today, people. you got to go with me on this because you're trying to worship God as an Egyptian. And we got to get Egypt out of this thing, people. Amen. We got to get these old ideas, these old beliefs out of us today. Moses fled and he dwelt in the land of Midian and he sat down by a well. Amen. He went to get him a drink of some living water. Praise God. Now listen to this. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Moses found a whole different occupation. He left his entire life of, of luxury and education and all that kind of stuff. He had a murder warrant out for his arrest. And God drove him into the wilderness. Does this sound familiar? Was it Jesus driven into the wilderness for 40 days? Amen. Amen. Look, you, God gives us these things to show these parallels, man. You start reading, you're going to see Jesus and all this stuff, people. Amen. So he led him to the backside of the desert, took Moses out to a desert place. Some that's what you all need, just like what God has taken me through. Amen. Some of you all seen me over these last couple of years in this pastorship. God take me through some desert places with my health and everything else. But what have we seen happen come out on the other side of that, Sister Beverly? Amen. We've seen a different man come back. Not the Moses that left. But a new Moses, the Moses that had that burning bush experience. And I want to get to that right here. Amen. So what we need to do is we need to be willing to pack up and get out of Egypt and be willing to go to a desert place for a while. Be a little dry. Get a little thirsty for Jesus. Amen. I want you to hear this. So Moses, 40 years. It wasn't like he was gone two weeks. Moses had built a life. Married. Family. Got him a business. He's a sheep herder. He's a shepherd. Isn't that ironic? Yep. Moses had a vision to be a shepherd. He had all that seminary school, that good Egyptian education. And what good 
did it do him? Okay, look what good did it do him? All that seminary school, what God had to get him out, give him some real life experience, didn't he? God had to take him out to the desert place. Take him to a place, to the end of yourself, where you're going to hunger and thirst for the things of God. Amen. Get away from your past. Get away from who you used to be. Amen. Amen. And God will teach you a new occupation. Just like he did Moses. Moses didn't know nothing about shepherding, I'm sure, when he got out there to that desert. But he learned that God put somebody in his life, Jethro, and taught him how to shepherd. That's what pastors do. Shepherds teach other people how to shepherd. That's right. Amen. Hey, that's all trying to do, people. Amen. So Moses is out there living his life. He started a new life. He just figured the vision's done. God's not going to use me anymore because I've gone too far. I'm too far from home. I'm too far from my education. I'm too far from these things. And I know some of y'all say that today. I'm too far from you, Lord. I walked away from a from a ministry or a church, Lord. I walked away from a marriage or it's not going the way that it, that it should be, Lord. And I'm in a desert place. Some of y'all are in a desert place today with your marriage, with your relationship with God. Amen. Some of y'all are still in Egypt and need to come out and come to the desert place. Amen. Amen. But I want to preach to the people that are in the desert place today that if you're sick and tired of the land of Egypt, amen, you got a murder warrant out for you because you wanted to stand up for the things of God. But you still got a ways to go, and you got a lot left to learn. Recognize that definition, don't you, Brother Jerry? That's what I say the definition of a pastor is. A long way to go and a lot left to learn, just like Moses had to do. But I want you to hear what happened to Moses. So Moses is beat by the law, doing his thing. Going through his routine on the backside of the mountain of God there. Don't know what he was thinking about. But the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Some of y'all have been coming to this church for a while now. You've had the angel of the Lord appear unto you in fire and flame from this pulpit. Amen? Amen? And some of y'all have seen that fire and that flame, and you just kept on going with the sheep. You said, that's not for me today, Jesus. Come on, sheep, let's go. Do you think Moses had ever seen anything like that before? I don't think he did. But here's the problem with the body of Christ. Like in the land of Egypt, you've seen so many fantastic things it doesn't phase you anymore. You've watched so many movies with special effects. And you, hold on. And you've watched so many preachers from the 80s and 90s and 2000s that have got on there and said, watch this lake grow. Okay? And you all fell for it. These false miracles, these false teachings. Why? Because Hollywood sells. It gets money. And preachers figured out, hey, I could go on there and put some fog lights in my church, or fog machines in my church, and some lights and make it look like a nightclub. More, more people will come. Amen? Amen? The church today looks like the land of Egypt. Yeah. It don't look like churches anymore when I walk into them. It's a nightclub. Who's the next act? Who's the next entertainer? That's going up there because pretty much when I hear them preach, they're entertainers. Yeah. They're not delivering anybody. They're filling an hour, an hour and a half with some flashy lights so they get some money in the pot and make people feel good. And they don't want people to fall off. Guess what? People fall off in the journey. Yes, they do. The Bible says only they that endure to the end shall be saved. But I want to come back to this burning bush, people. Every single day, God puts a burning bush moment in your life and you walk right past it. I've done it so many stinking times. Why? Because my face is either in the phone or I'm consumed with the things of the land of Egypt. I'm consumed with what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to wear, uh, how I'm going to get the next bill paid, uh, what the next object in life I'm going to obtain is. Amen. You need to have this heart. Today you need to say, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight 
while the bush is not burnt. Or I want you to turn aside with me today, people, from your normal routine, from whatever it is you got going on, whatever job you think you're going, sheep you think you're hurting, whatever the most important thing you got going on in your life right now, and stop and turn aside to see this great sight. And I'm going to paint a picture of this sight for you today of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Because Amen. every day we're walking past the cross. We're walking past it in our Facebook. And we see people like Todd, that, that street preacher. We fly right past the message. We fly right past all this so we can read about a, a product or something on there. And here's something else that burns me up about Egypt, the church of Egypt. I could take somebody in the church of Egypt, especially a female, and don't take this wrong. But if I give a female in the church of Egypt a new product, hey, try, hey, me and my wife have been drinking these health shakes. Okay? Why don't you try this health shake, Sister Connie? And before I know it, Connie has told 37 people about how great this milkshake is and how, about how good it made her feel. And I'll go through the last eight months. And it's not you, Connie. I'm just saying. And I'll go through the last eight months of Connie's Facebook page, and there's nothing about Jesus. But she can tell you about that milkshake, what the product is in there. Uh, she can tell you about these new vitamins. She can tell you about this new thrift shop that just opened up and all these new crafts that they got. And they promote the wares and the things of Egypt. And Jesus is just another God. It up. He's just another God. When will we turn aside? When will we get up out of Egypt, go to the desert place on the backside of the mountain of God, and start seeking and start looking for that burning bush moment? Amen. God gives it to you every day. If you look for it, you'll find it. You'll see it. He'll reveal it to you. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. I'm going to stop right there. If you don't stop to turn aside to see, how is God going to call you? He ain't going to say anything to you. God's standing up there every day. Jesus, 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 burning bush moment. I'm good today, God. I got something I got to take care of. Something more important. So God is not speaking to you anymore. Marshall, why haven't I heard the voice of God? I, I read my word every day. I'm going, but something's missing because I'm missing the burning bush moment because I'm consumed with the things of Egypt. I'm consumed with the preachers of Egypt. Amen. Wow. Listen, I want to know who I'm learning from. All right? When I got a man that's out there doing movies, and he started an affair with his church secretary, shacked up with her, ditched his wife, never publicly professed, confessed, or repented of this, and he's out here casting demons out of people. And he's got theaters filled, filled with people to come in and watch him get a demon to manifest on somebody. This is the church of Egypt where I don't have to have the character of Jesus Christ as long as I come in and I put on a good show. Let me tell you, these people that come in, and I watch these shows, where they come in and they say, I need you to pray for me. Pastor, I'm a Christian. I need you to pray for me. And, and when this happens, it'll manifest. Listen, these people are not demon possessed. And let me tell you this I'm tired of Satan getting the credit for the sin in your flesh. Amen. Listen to what the church of Egypt says today, John of Marsha. The church of Egypt says, You are no longer responsible for your sin. So they started with the psychology of Egypt. It was your mom or your dad that messed you up, that made you the way that you are. Listen, they're letting men and women go that molest and rape little children, okay, because something bad happened to them and they're no longer accountable for their sin. Thank you. Baloney. It's garbage. It's trash. I tried that garbage. 
when I was a teenager and started getting in trouble, when my daddy's an alcoholic and this and this and that and that, the Church of Egypt doesn't take, does not take responsibility for its sin. Amen. That preacher that's preaching all that nonsense, he never took responsibility. He's a charlatan and an adulterer, and his wife is a false prophetess. Amen. While his wife, his real wife, is suffering in a homeless shelter somewhere. You people got to gotta understand who you're learning from. I preach this time and time again, their manner of life. Turn Egypt off. Turn TBN off. Unless you're well grounded in the Word of God and you know what you're doing, stay away from those things. Get your Bible open. Read your Bible. Say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Jesus, Paul said you have no, uh, Jesus, you have no need for a man to teach you. The Holy Ghost will teach you. Get in that word of God. Yeah, and do you know how I know that what this man is preaching is fake? Because the people that were getting trained, the minute that the devil reared his ugly head, they jumped back, they pulled back. This is lift. This is not a rebuke. Okay? This is not a rebuke or a reproof. I'm laying out facts today because I want people to see who you're in the foxhole with, Amen. who you're learning from on TV. Okay? These great, fantastic things. Don't you understand? We live in the greatest time of deception that ever was. That if it were possible, Amen. even the very elect would be deceived. There's a reason that God has made the Word of God the most published book on the planet so that you'll read it. And I'm going to tell you, there's a whole lot of people, myself included, that are going to be without excuse on that day. Hey, you could have read the study and show yourself approved, but instead you said, I want Hollywood to give me the gospel. Instead of reading, hey, I want this Jonathan Ruimi who goes and lays on graves and does grave sucking and demonic practices and idol worship, to come and be my Jesus on TV. I don't want that. Hollywood can keep that garbage. But you all keep going back to the Egyptians to get your gospel. And here's the thing. They don't know Jesus. They're just as ignorant as the children of Israel that have been captured for 400 years. you got to get you a Moses for a pastor, amen? Somebody that's been to the backside of the desert that got away from Hollywood and all that mess. And saw that burning bush and said, you know what? God was able to call unto me. And I finally said, here am I. But John, I had to get past all the garbage. I had to leave Egypt behind. I had to stop listening to the preachers and the teachers of Egypt. Amen. Because the preachers and the teachers of Egypt, remember when Moses went before and, and, and they were turning staffs and the snakes and all that kind of stuff. The preachers of Egypt can be pretty fantastic. They've got Hollywood and CGI behind them. Hey, Amen. Don't believe anything that you see on there. Don't you know they've got this face mapping technology? I see it all the time. People go in and they put their own face in, in these movie clips and stuff. It's getting so smooth that you can't tell the difference. You don't know who's preaching, teaching you on TV. Good Lord, Joe Biden could be dead in a freezer somewhere, which he probably is. And who knows who that is or what we're seeing on TV up there half the time. You're trapped in Egypt. You love the sorcery, the magicians of Egypt. You don't want the backside of the desert where it's dry, it's hot. There's nothing fantastic out there to look at other than some lizards running around. Amen. But that's where you get to know God. Not of the fantastic. You get to know him in that still small voice where God gets you alone in a desert place where he can deal with you and all of the Egypt that is inside of you. Amen. Amen. Will you turn aside today from all this flashy stuff to see the burning bush? To see Jesus calling you today in this stuff. Amen. Now I want you to hear this. And he said, this is James, this is the Lord speaking, and he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Yeah. Okay? Amen. Hold on. Take off them shoes, Ed. You cannot get near me with that old walk. Amen. You can't get near me with the old Egyptian shoes on. 
You can't get near me with that old Egyptian dust on your feet. I got to show you a different way. I got a new pair of shoes for you. Amen. I got some shoes. I'm going to show you how to shod your feet, Moses, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Amen. Are you with me, people? Today you're going to learn about deliverance. Okay? The gods of Egypt, they try to come and manifest demons and do all this kind of stuff. A pastor of Moses comes in and grabs somebody by the hand and says, Come on, sister. What did you experience in that room the other night? I like so much stuff down in your office. Come on. I mean, I... I Don't get personal, with it. Keep it general now. So much relief. Listen. But I had so many, so much, so much, so much. I had so much just come at me every single day. Egypt. Yeah. Egypt. Yeah. And once she got back there and I showed her and my wife and showed, do you, do you see how you're still in Egypt even though you're saying God, God, God? You're just like the children of Israel. You're trapped by the Egyptian taskmasters. I was trapped by, my, by what I thought, and I'm saying like by my Come demons. I, I mean, that's what I said. I was trapped by my demons. That's right. And I ain't got no demons around me. Amen. I'm a child of God. And you know, you know what you're trapped by? You are trapped by the ideals, the ideology, and the lifestyle of Egypt. That's, right. that's all this is, people. So God told him, you can't draw near me. Take the shoes off your feet. This is holy ground. You ain't bringing that Egyptian mess up in here with me. I'm about to teach you a new way. I'm about to teach you God's way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Listen, you get that Jesus moment, and the Lord really shows up in your life. Just like he did with me that night, Sister Beverly, and he delivered me from all that mess. Girl, I couldn't even look at it. I could hear the Lord talk, but I couldn't even lift my head to love him. I had my burning bush moment. I decided to open my eyes, look up. Look on the fire of God. Be willing to run into it. Even if I become burned up and there's nothing left of me. Which is a good thing, Brother Jerry. Which is a good thing. Hide your face today for just a moment with me. Hide your face with me. I want you to think about all the Egypt that's in you, the Egyptian shows that you watch, myself included, where the name of Jesus is taken in vain every other sentence. God's name is taken to damn and condemn and not to glorify and praise. And we continue to watch these shows where they take our Lord's name in vain and they curse him and we enjoy it and we participate in it week after week. We should hide our face. Amen. But let me say this. While you have your head down, listen to what God says. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows. Listen, some of y'all are out here making bricks every day, Patricia, every day. If you were a drug addict or an alcoholic, you know what I'm talking about. You get up every day, you make the bricks, and you know that you have a certain tally that you got to make that day. And you get up for the devil and you start running. God has seen your affliction. Amen. He's seen what the taskmasters have done to you. But you're also accountable. You can be free today. God has made that way for you to be free today. Amen. And you're going to make a choice. Well, I want to continue to sit under this taskmaster of addiction, this taskmaster of greed and lying on my taxes or lying where my money's concerned. 
lying to the pastor about where I'm at spiritually and what I am and am not doing. Ananias and Sapphira people. Yes, amen. You're dying spiritually because you are putting on a false image of who you are, of who you think you want me to think you are, what God thinks you are. Stop lying to the Holy Spirit today. God knows who we are. We don't have to lie to him. Come just as you are. Amen. God knows your sorrow. He knows that you've been beaten up. He knows that you've been abused in this life. He knows what's happening to your children in the schools of Egypt. Because now they're all getting the education of Egypt. God knows your sorrow today. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. God has sent his son today to deliver you out of this. Amen. Amen. Don't you know that the church today, you are in the hand of the Egyptians today? If you're still watching all these preachers and these prosperity preachers and all these guys and these fantastic people, man, you're still in Egypt. You're still watching the things of Egypt. Get your Bible open. And start reading. That's all I'm asking. Just get your Bible out and start reading. Praise God. Listen. Did that switch over for me? Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Listen, God has seen how these pastors have been oppressing the church and not preaching the truth and things like that. That's why God is getting crazy preachers like me, Todd Carr, John Fowdy. Hey, you're one of the crazy, bro. I'm going to lump you right in there with us. Why? Because you're just big and dumb enough to get up here and praise Jesus with the rest of us. Amen? You take that as a compliment, right? I do. Because you're bold enough. Because let me tell you something about this couple right here. Even after taking a hit in their understanding on something, they're still sitting here in the seat. They said, hey, we're getting back in the fight. We want to do this. These are the people that I want with me in ministry. Yeah, that's right. Amen? These are the type of people that I'm going to continue to surround myself with that humble themselves in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Just like me, so I don't know everything. Praise God. Let's sit at the feet of Jesus and learn something together. And I've learned so much from these two. Yeah. That's why we keep them around. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Look, God will do the same thing for y'all too. But God sees this oppression. He wants to get you out from underneath. Listen. Come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out Egypt. of Egypt. Are your people starting to see a pattern with how God is wording stuff? Bring them out of Egypt, out of Egypt, out of Egypt. Amen. He's trying to bring us out of Egypt, people. Now we'll jump over to the New Testament. Bring it together with Jesus. Well, where's Jesus and all that, Pastor Scott? Amen. Well, here he is right here. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Why would God in the New Testament, Paul be quoting this stuff from the Old Testament, again, about Egypt? Why is God constantly telling us, come out from among them? Be separate, okay? Here's why, because those evil communications are corrupted. Your good manners. When you hang with Egyptians and play with Egyptians, go to school with Egyptians, you're going to look like an Egyptian. You're going to be an Egyptian. Amen. Until you come out from among them and be separate, like Peter says, they think it's strange of you that you don't run to the same level of riotousness and unruliness that they do. But people, the only way that God becomes our Father is when we come out from among them and be separate. God will not be your God if you stay in Egypt. 
Now, here, here's some scary facts. You want to do this, go Google this. Go look and see, Google, did all the children of Israel leave with Moses? And you will find out that a whole bunch did not want to leave. They didn't want to go with Moses. They enjoyed Egypt. They liked the paycheck of Egypt. They liked the flesh pots of Egypt. They liked the entertainment of Egypt. They liked the Egyptian foods. They liked all of it. And what did God do when he brought the children of Israel out into the desert? Before I even go any further in this. God gave them a new set of laws. What was the first thing that he said? Thou, I am the Lord thy God that have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, if these children of Israel were really the great strong Christians that we are today, they would have already known. Well, wait, we're the children of Israel. We don't worship other gods. You don't need to tell us that, Moses. Why did he need to give the law? Because they were lawless. They were living like Egyptians. So he had to tell them, no other gods but me. Hey, don't bow yourself down to idols. What is Egypt? All idols and all gods. We see it in the Catholic Church today. So there's still Egypt. There's still Babylon today. Amen? Amen. Come out from among them and be separate. If you do not separate yourself from this world, you will be judged with the world and you will be cast into the lake of fire with hell, death, the devil, and the rest of this world. Amen? Listen. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. These are the gods of Egypt. Okay? The devil working on these people. Amen? Among whom also we all had our conversation. In times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were by nature Egyptians, just like the rest of them. Amen. Listen, all of us, every single one of us, has had our conversation in Egypt in times past. Okay? We had that old, nasty, filthy conversation. All right, used to go, and our conversation is also not just what we say, but how we walk, where we go, our manner of life, okay? Because even when I'm not saying something, if I'm walking, I'm talking. People are seeing what I'm doing. You're still having a conversation. But we've all had our conversation in Egypt. Their shows, their foods. We still eat their foods. We still watch their shows. We love their entertainment. And then we love to watch the Chosen series. We love to watch Jesus Revolution. They love the story. But what about the people that are portraying these people of the story that we love? My God, I was going to think of a guy who was going to play Jesus Christ. They could find somebody with some Christ-like character to do so. Amen. Not some grave sucker. Because he looks like Jesus. And he's popular. Egyptians love Egyptians. Egyptians love Egyptian food. They love Egyptian entertainment. And they will always continue to run after the Egyptian preachers. Come out from among them. Be separate. Get rid of that Egyptian conversation. Turn off TBN. Turn off Creflo Dollar. All those other idiots on there. Amen. Please, get into the Word of God and get a different conversation. If not, when the tribulation comes, what are you going to do? You ain't going to have a spine to stand. Philippians 1.27, of you let your conversation be as it become the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let your conversation literally become the gospel. Quit talking these things in the world. Start talking to Jesus. Start talking the word of God with somebody. Somebody wants to sit down and have a conversation with you about something. Hey, we're talking about Jesus today. Nothing else. We're talking about Jesus. If you're talking about some other filth and some smut, you're going to have to go down there and talk about it because over here, we, we serve know. Jesus. We, we don't do that filthy communication anymore. Amen. So, so that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I can hear of your affairs. That you're standing fast in one spirit with one mind together 
striving together for the faith of the gospel. Listen, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God, it don't matter what they say. Listen, when you stop eating Egyptian foods, they're going to talk about you. When you stop listening to Egyptian music, they're going to start, they're going to start talking about you. Amen. When you tell somebody else, hey, I'm glad you love that new movie or whatever, but it's not for me. Well, why is that not for you? Are you stuck up? Are you holier than thou? No, brother, I just don't get my gospel from a sinner. I get my gospel from men and women of God that have a proven track record whose manner of life and character I know, whether they're getting up and doing the drama or being portrayed uh, as a character or an actor on TV. Other than that, you're just an entertainer. You're, you're part of Egypt. You're just another Egyptian to me. I ain't got time for that. I want people that are going to get into the Word of God, that are going to have a proven character, that are going to come out from among them, be separate, have a different conversation, and not be afraid of what people are going to say to you because of that. I praise God. I had somebody I don't even know. I won't say his name, but, but some guy who's got a couple other mutual friends. I showed up in my inbox the other morning. Your faith. And of course, he didn't spell it Y-O-U uh, apostrophe R-E. It was Y-O-U-R fake. So I, I, I mean, I kind of laughed at that at first. But when you preach the truth of this gospel and you start calling out the Egyptians for who and what they are, and you start pulling the cover off and say, hey, do you see what this person is really like? That's why they can't turn the lights on in the churches, because if they lit it all up, you'd see a congregation full of people that are undelivered. You'd see a bunch of Egyptians who want to worship Egyptian style. They want to walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> Amen, that famous song, walk like an Egyptian. And that's what they want. Hold on, they, but hey, don't play them old hymnals, Jerry. I don't want them old hymnal songs. They just don't rock and roll like the music of Egypt does today. Get me a rock and roll band up there. I want it to sound like the music I used to listen to so I can still say it to Jesus. Here's what I got a problem with people I was following. We got a couple. And there's people that have been guests at our church that know this couple. They're out of Cincinnati. And they got this big ministry in India. They buy people out of, out of brick kilns and stuff like that. And I posted on their wall one day because they showed this picture. And here's what I hate. I hate liars that paint a false picture of the gospel and that say that people are coming to Christ at their church or through their ministry and they're not. They're a liar. They're a deceiver. So here's what I saw. I got a picture of this American man preaching the gospel in India. All these crowds running down. Here's what their caption is. All these people are running to receive Jesus Christ. And I posted underneath there, I said, praise God, look at all those, Hindu, look at all the Indians, the Hindus, forsaking all of the other gods for the one true God, Jesus Christ. My comment was removed, and I was sent a private message stating uh, that could be very dangerous for something. And, and, and I knew then, this couple, they're starting, they look just like Kenneth and Gloria Copeland now. They got them a little daily show that they put on, and, and, and they preached a decent message, and they're associated with this river church out of Tampa, which is a big prosperity preacher, Robbie Howard Brown. Check his record. He got in trouble with the IRS a couple decades ago. They had to shut it down, and he started his ministry again. Okay? But this couple, anyway, so when I sent this message to them, and they deleted my comment, I came to the realization of the understanding of this. They're Egyptians preaching the gods of Egypt so they can get a paycheck. Because if they walked over into India, I would make one service out there, okay, because they would kill me. I'm not going to deviate from the gospel message. When I preach Jesus, there are no other gods besides the Lord our God. There is no other way other than Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And if you post a picture showing people running down saying they're receiving Jesus, but you did not preach, there are no other gods. Besides Jesus, there's no Shiva. There's, there's none of these other elephant gods. They are not gods. Jesus and Jesus only. They would get murdered right there. And the same people that were running out of the stands to receive Christ would be the ones that would kill them. So all they've done was introduce another god. A little Jesus. 
Oh, come get Jesus. He'll heal you. He'll give you money. He'll give you this. So they preach a prosperity gospel. You guys need to do some research. Right now, the prosperity gospel is dying in America because people woke up. Do you know where it's popular? Africa. They're eating those poor Africans up with that stuff. And now you're getting all these African preachers sending you requests to get money. Because it's a prosperity gospel. It's the same thing going on in India with, with that guy and his wife are teaching. And their friends have sat right over here in our group with us. Spineless, cowardice. When I was in the penitentiary and I preached the gospel, my life was threatened. Muslims, other people, men that were real killers. And to see somebody stand up and preach a false gospel, to have somebody run up to get their coffer still, to say we're doing this to build a ministry, you're a liar and you're not helping anybody. You're an Egyptian in Egypt and God's going to call you into account on that day because you've denied Christ. You've denied the truth of the gospel. When you walk out there, John, and somebody walks up to you on the street and they're a man dressed as a woman and they have a conversation, are you part of that delusion? Do you say, yes, ma'am? No. I'm not part of Egypt anymore. I'm not part of the delusion. And I'm going to suffer because of that. People are going to tell me I'm hateful, I'm fake, because I don't go along with some fruit cup. It is what it is. I don't like effeminate men. Amen. Amen. God does not like effeminate Amen. men. Do you know why he doesn't like effeminate men? Because effeminate men will be terrified. A little effeminate man, and I ain't talking about he's got to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've seen 98 pound weaklings stand up to the biggest man in the penitentiary and say, not today. And guess what? It wasn't today. Amen. Amen. It's about character, people. These pastors want to give you the character of Egypt and make you think you're a Christian. Amen. But you can't even preach the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You say, there are no other gods. Whether you kill me here in this place today, take my pastorship, whatever, I'm going to preach the truth. For unto you it is given on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but to suffer for his name's sake. Amen. If there's ever going to be a time in Christianity where you're going to suffer, it's going to be now. Yeah. All that other stuff, the old torture and all that stuff, if you thought that Spanish Inquisition was something, wait till you see what's coming during the tribulation. Yeah. Lord have mercy. But if you ain't willing to suffer, you're not worthy. Any man that will not take up his cross and follow Jesus is not worthy of Jesus. And I'm quoting Christ. That is not me saying those words. Amen. Let's get this wrapped up. I need uh, Jerry on the piano for communion because we're going to do communion right in the middle of this message here. Bob, uh, Jerry, Olsen, whoever, Ed, you want Ed, 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 Bob. Bob and Ed. Guys, come get, get our communion together. Paul said this. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death that if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Amen. So if you want to know the resurrected life, do you also want to know the fellowship of his suffering, Sister Patricia? You willing to suffer for a little while to get what Jesus has for you? Amen. Sometimes we've got to suffer just a little while, Sister Kim. The Bible says God scourges every son whom he receives and chastises every son whom he receives. It's a good thing. Sometimes kind of have God light us up a little bit and get us going in the right direction. There's a reason you'll see why I put the communion where I did because the very next scripture 
is that they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And what did Jesus say? My words, they are spirit and they are life. We're going to walk in the Word today. Amen. How much Egypt do you still got in you today? Do you still enjoy the foods of Egypt, the shows of Egypt? The drinks, the alcohol, the drugs of Egypt? The pleasures of Egypt? People, when we have a communion with Christ, we can't drink of the cup of Christ and the cup of devils. That's right. So all I've come to do today in this message is this, is to try to give you that burning bush moment, to try to say something to get you to turn aside to look that you would hear the voice of God calling to you today, Sister Jenny, that you would hear Him calling to you that you would just take enough time, Jerry, just to just to turn aside and look and see what God is doing. Maybe see what, what He wants to say to you. Maybe come up to this altar today and kick your shoes off spiritually and get on some holy ground and say, I'm done walking my walk and I'm done with the former conversation. I'm done talking my talk. I'm ready for Jesus, Connie. I, I am. I'm ready for Jesus. Yeah. Everything that's in me, Caleb, I'm ready for Jesus. I'm ready for Jesus in, in my heart, in my marriage, in my ministry, in my life, in my children. Are you ready for Jesus today? As the deer panteth for the water, is your soul long after God today? Are you hungry? Are you in that desert place today? Just been going through the routine of life, herding them sheep? Clock in, clock out. Go home, back to Egypt every day. Don't forget the pastor today, guys. <laughs> Look, we got a good meal today, good, good fellowship coming. This is a house of deliverance, a house of restoration. Hey, look, the only, the only way you can get somebody delivered is they got to understand that they're in Egypt, and you also got to get them to understand that they need to get out. Because some people are just happy to be there. And they say, oh, I know Jesus, I know God. No, you don't. You're still in captivity. You're still in a cage. Still in a cage. Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. And it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. Listen, Denying Jesus is not just like Peter that night saying, I don't know that, Lord. I don't know who you're talking about. You deny every time you turn on that filthy TV program. Amen. You deny every time you take that shot of liquor, that shot of alcohol, that shot of dope. You deny every time you go and you get with that boy or girl you're not married to. Amen. You deny 
Every time you look at your brother and hate them in your heart and kill them in your heart, you deny when you look on a man or a woman to lust after them in your heart, you deny are you people starting to see a pattern here? It's not just denying them open. It's in our conversation. It's in what we do. I don't want to deny Jesus. I don't want y'all to deny him. So we have to be crucified with him. Amen. That's why this communion is so important today, man. Because if I'm crucified with Christ, I live, but not I, but Christ that lives in me. And if it's not that new creature in Christ Jesus, you're still the same old Egyptian, still going down the same old path to the same end result. But today is different. Today I want you to receive Jesus. I want you to call on his name. I want you to say, Jesus, get me out of here. Give me a Moses that I can follow. Somebody that's faithful.